Welcome back to our wretched prepare for a drama that perhaps you have starred in. It's the pastor's study preacher working on his text for his Sunday sermon when suddenly he hears a this is a pretty lavish recreation we're doing here. Budget wasn't spared. Come in, parishioner pragmatic. How can I help you today? Oh, pastor, we're so glad that you're here. We wanted to let you know how much we love your preaching. We have never been the same since we started attending this church. You open up the Bible. It teaches us. It convicts us. It comforts us. We can't thank you enough. And because the pastor has been in this drama before, he waits for the shoe to drop, and it is a conjunction. You know what the next word is. But, Pastor, the church is so small, we don't understand why you're preaching. It's so amazing, and there just aren't any programs for the kids, so I'm afraid we have to go to a church down the street. The pastor, who has been around this block before, wisely asks, tell me about that church. Do they preach the Bible? Because if they do, he will most certainly give them his blessing. I understand. We'd prefer you stay. But for the sake of your family and their spiritual growth, we can understand why you would go to a another Bible-based church. But lo and behold, that is not the case. It is a fun center with whoop de doo programs that amuse the masses and that entertain the kids, and the parents decide that's where we gotta go so the kids won't crab all the time about going to church. Congratulations if you have been in that play. You have succumbed to the illness, the malady, the virus of pragmatism. What is your seemingly good goal? To make sure the kids want to go to church. Unfortunately, that is not the right goal. If you decide we just need the kids to be happy, quit squawking, and go Wednesday nights, therefore, what's going to happen? You're not going to send them to a dull Bible study. You're going to send them to a center that amuses them. That is pragmatism. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment you're the pastor and you have been in that meeting more than once. How many times would you endure that before you started to think, well, huh, may, may, maybe we need to become more like that church down the street. I mean, we're losing everybody here. I guess we better stop with all the Bible studies and the boring youth group teaching. We better become seeker sensitive. It is a temptation for pastor and parishioner alike question. How do we go about the business of warring against and defeating the disease of pragmatism? When it comes to the way that we approach worship, there are a couple of historical ideas that we have about worship. Coming out of the Reformation, there were two main ideas. There was a Lutheran Anglican idea that was called the normative principle. And the normative principle of worship basically said that in our worship, and think about this, we're, we're, we're coming out of the Reformation. We, we, we understand worship from a, a, a Roman Catholic perspective, and we understand that theologically that's wrong. It's inappropriate. That's not what we're doing in worship. But, but what do we do? What do we let go of and what do we keep? Well, from the Lutheran Anglican perspective, the idea was in worship, we do those things that God prescribes in his word plus anything that is not expressly prohibited. That's the Lutheran slash Anglican idea. The Puritan idea was known as the regulative principle. And the regulative principle states that we can and must only incorporate in our worship those things that are expressly prescribed in Scripture and nothing else.
There is your cure to pragmatism, the regulative principle of worship. Not asking what seem to be good questions like, what type of worship do I like? What sort of services do I prefer? What must we do on Sunday morning to grow attendance? What must we deliver to the masses to keep them coming back? Eh, 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 eh. Ah, ah, wrong questions. The right question is, what does God want church to be? Normative worship says, this pleases me. I will give it to God as worship. Or worse yet, this pleases lost people. So we will give it to God as worship. Whereas regulative worship says, I will look and investigate and listen and hear exactly what God says he delights in in worship and I will give him that. Because my starting point in worship is not God and what satisfies him, but it's, or not man and what satisfies him, but God and what satisfies him. Take a dose of the regulative principle and you will kill the disease of pragmatism. Let us, as we consider what we are doing as a called out assembling of the saints on Sunday morning, let our question not be what pleases people, what pleases me, but what pleases God. That correct question will forever put an end to pragmatic, seeker-sensitive, unbiblical methods. Forever. If you have been going bonkers regarding health insurance, right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care. I am thrilled to commend to you MediShare, a community of Christians sharing each other's health care bills. For 100,000 members strong, sharing over $4 billion in medical bills. That means a savings on average per family of $500 per month. Find out more by going to metashare.com slash wretched.